In this video, I'm going to talk about error handling in C. So error handling facilities are provided by C that allow us to detect and recognize what error has occurred in terms of a number that uniquely identifies that error. They also allow us to output a message that describes the error that has occurred. And to access these facilities, what I'm going to do is I'm going to include this errno.h library here. And this is a standard C library. It just comes with C. And what's inside of it is an int value. And that special int value is called errno. And that int value is going to be set to a particular number depending on the error that has occurred. And it could be set by all kinds of functions that are actually running as part of our C program. And you know what it's set to is going to depend on the error that has occurred. But what we can do is we can actually access that int and output it to see what error has occurred. We can also use that int to help us get at a message that describes the error that has occurred. So let's actually include that in here. We're going to say here extern int errno. So this extern, what this lets us do is it lets us access the error number variable that is inside this library, essentially. It allows, allows us to share that variable between files. So that way we've got access to it in this file, even though the variable is actually in this file here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually cause an error to occur, and we're going to see what happens to this error number number here. So a common error that could occur in C is a file not existing. We try to open a file for reading. It doesn't exist. We're going to get an error. So let's try that. We're going to say here file star fh. Then I'm going to say here fh is equal to fopen. I'm going to say dne.txt for it does not exist for reading. Now this file does not exist. So fopen is actually going to set the error number to be some kind of number that represents the error that has occurred. And now if file open doesn't work, it's also going to return null because we have no you know, access to a file. So FH is going to be null. So we'll, we'll do a check here. We're going to say here, if FH is null, that means an error has occurred and we'll put our error handling code in there. If it somehow did open, it's not going to in this case, because we know the file doesn't exist, but if it somehow did open, I'm just going to close it just for completionist sake. But what we're going to do now is we're actually going to look at the error number here and let's see what it gets set to. So we're going to say here, printf, and we're going to say ERRNO. And I'm going to say here after, and I'm going to say percent %d slash n, and let's output the error number after an error has occurred. Let's also do a printf, though, before we even try to open the file to see what error number is before. So the way it's going to work is that the error number before we actually try to do anything is going to be zero. Only when an error has occurred is it going to be set to something else, something that is going to represent the error that has occurred. So let's uh, fix this up here and then we'll do a compilation. I just got to do a double equals there to check that the FH is equal to null. And then let's do a compilation here and we'll run it. And we get that the error number before is zero and the error number after is two. And what's going on is basically when the program first starts running, there's no error yet, right? So error number is going to be zero. That's basically the default value. And then after we try to open this file that doesn't exist, we end up here because the file handle is null. And at that point, the error number has been set to a code that represents the error, basically. And so when we print out the error here, we get error number after is two. And, you know, that's, you know, letting us print out the error now. So there's actually a couple ways we can get at the string representation of the error, which is going to be more helpful than a number like this. So one way to get at it is we can include string.h. So if I say include string.h, this is going to let us access a special function here called str error. And str error is actually going to return a string representing the error when it's given the error number here. So I can say here printf, and I can say printf, and I'll say percent %s here, and I'll just say here error msg, and then I'll output the error with this str error method, and I have to give it the error number. So I'm going to say here error, or error no. Okay, so we'll give this a try here. And I get error message, no such file or directory. So we're actually getting a string now that represents the error. And that's going to be useful to tell a user, perhaps depending on whether they're technical or not, or at least to maybe put to a log file or something like that, describing what error has occurred in a more human readable way. So we can also actually get at this error message another way. I can actually say here, P... I'll actually take out this one here for a second. I'm going to say here P error, and I'm just going to put in here error like this. So I'm actually, actually I'll put an error message. Why not? To keep it consistent with the other one there. So P error actually does a similar thing. So I'll run this here and oops, I forgot the semicolon. 
So I'll add in the semicolon. And I run this here. And I get error message, no such file directory. It looks just like before, even though I recompiled it. So what's going on here is that p error accepts a string. And what it's going to do is, as long as the string is not blank, then what it's going to do is it's going to take the string, it's going to add a colon to it and a space, and then it's going to output the error message. So that's why we get error message here, and then we get colon, space, and then the, the actual error message content itself. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to use the value error number to output the appropriate error, because this function has access to it as well. But we could put something else here. We could put like, you know, message, just like that. And then we're gonna get message colon space, no such file directory. So we can run this here and we get message colon space, no such file directory. And so we can put whatever we want here as a string. And it's just gonna basically add a colon to it, add a space, and then it'll put the error message after it. And that's the behavior there. Now, if we leave it blank, if we leave it as a blank string, it'll actually just output the error message. So we can clear this, compile it and run it. And now we just get the error message, no such file or directory. So you can do that as well. Now, one thing we're doing here is we're using printf to print out the error messages. And I mean, this will work, but just so you know, there's actually something called standard error in C. So it's called STD error. And there's, there's different streams of input and output in C, like standard in is the standard input stream, standard out is the standard output stream. And basically when you're working with the terminal, standard in is basically, basically when the, the user is typing in characters and standard out is output to the terminal. Standard error is also going to be set by default to the terminal here. But as a best practice, it's a good idea to print out error message type data to standard error specifically, because this could be redirected somewhere else. So standard error could be redirected to not output to the terminal, but instead to output to a file. So to do a printf to standard error, we're actually gonna use fprintf. So we're gonna say here, fprintf, then I'm gonna say here, std error. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna output the error message to standard error. Now in our case, they're the same thing, like the terminal is standard error. So it's not gonna make a difference for us, but this is what we should do. So I'm gonna say here, fprintf, and same thing, I'm gonna say here, std error here, and I'm gonna output my error message to standard error here. Just to be kind of consistent with how we should really do this, which is we should be outputting our error messages to standard error because this could be set to something like a log file or something like that instead. So we'll do it one more time here, run it, and you know now we get the error messages being output to the terminal because the terminal is standard error in this case. And you'll notice that we get both error messages printed out both ways. So p error here, we get no such file directory. And then we do the f printf with error message. And the percent percent s placeholder here is being set to standard error, error number, which is also going to be no such file or directory. And so that's the basics of error handling in C. Check out portfoliocourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.